And also tonight we are awaiting that other Nobel, the Nobel Peace Prize, historically awarded to men like Nelson Mandela. The average age of the winner is 62. But tonight, the youngest nominee is a 16-year-old girl who spoke up for the 31 million girls around the world who do not get to go to school. She was shot in the head by the Taliban, but she emerges tonight with a new book, I Am Malala, and her message that it is possible for every one of us to change the world. Out of a valley 7,000 miles away, a powerful light. We are starving for education. For us, it's like a precious gift. It's like a diamond. Tonight, a tiny Pashtu child may be the bravest girl in the world. Malala Yousafzai, who loved her little home and loved her school. When out of the shadows came the Taliban, the radical fundamentalist men who banned girls' schools, bombed them, threw acid at the students. They terrorized the town with corpses in the street, flogging women publicly. But somehow, Malala never lost her powerful certainty that girls also deserve a full life. They cannot stop me. I will get my education if it is in home, school, or any place. What was the moment you were most afraid, that you had the most fear? Like, I was feeling fear all the time. At night when I used to sleep, I was thinking that, shall I put a knife under my pillow? I think life is always dangerous. Some people get afraid of it. Some people don't go forward. But some people, if they want to achieve their goal, they have to go. And so, somewhat like Anne Frank, Malala decided to write a diary and send a message to the world, anonymously. And then at age 11, on camera, online, one of her first interviews calling for help. We must have the confidence to say that this thing is going wrong and we must raise our voice. And by her side, navigating through fear and hope, her father, a teacher, who knew his little girl was all possibility. When uh, I saw her for the first time, a very newborn child, and I looked into her eyes, I fell in love with her, believe me. I love her. The New York Times heard about her and filmed a documentary. Her name was becoming famous inside Pakistan. I think we should not put out the camera, OK? When the radical Taliban decided her message was so strong, they would take her life. With her childlike, magical thinking, Malala says she rehearsed in her mind what she would say if an attacker came. It was always my desire before the attack that if a man comes, what would you tell him, Malala? I used to think like that. I would tell that man that I even want education for your daughter. And I'm you not think speaking. that would work against a gun? But I thought that words and books and pens are more powerful than gun. A year ago, in October 2012, she was on a school bus, like the one children still ride in Pakistan. Her friends were singing. On the day when I was shot, all of my friends' faces were covered, except mine. Was that wise? It was brave, but was it wise? At that time, I wanted to live my life as I want. She says she noticed on that day, the road was strangely quiet. I didn't see those men. I just could see, like, there is no one. There used to be a huge crowd on that road, and on that day, there was no one. Two men approached, one of them with a Colt 45. He climbs on the bus and asks the question, who is Malala? She doesn't remember what happened next, but her friend told her. She said, like, you said nothing, and you were just for you were just holding my hand and you just squeezed my hand like you were just forcing it and you said nothing and she said like you just look at looked at the men like this then she said like then he uh fired three three bullets and one hit you on the left side of uh, of, of my head i would have been doing like this so i hide my face because there was gunpowder powder on my fingers a child gravely wounded and how she would survive is simply a testament to miracles, including the impossibility of a specialist from England who happened to be in Pakistan and rushed to help save her. The chances of being shot at point blank range in the head and that happening, I don't know. But it is amazing, truly amazing. I, I don't know why she survived. Someone theorized maybe his hand was shaky. He hit her there. Miracle? If you believe in miracles, yes, absolutely.
Maybe it's the backbone and here's the brain and God saved me. Malala says maybe death was just not ready to take her. I think death didn't want to kill me and God was with me and the people prayed for me. And tonight, from her speech at the United Nations to the possible Nobel Prize, she has an answer to the question asked by that gunman. Who is Malala? And I say, I am Malala. And I'm going to publish a book. And I want to tell girls all around the world that education is important. Raise up your voice for education. They thought that the bullet would silence us, but they failed. I am Malala. I am Malala. Weakness, fear, and hopelessness died. Strength, power, and courage was born. We are Malala! And tomorrow, her new book, I Am Malala, hits bookshelves. And later this week, we'll tell you more about that series of miracles that saved her life. And also, we'll take you inside the world of radical Muslims, including women, asking them to explain why they think a child could be such a threat. And that will be Friday, a special edition of 2020 Unbreakable, an ABC News exclusive at 10 p.m. Eastern.